Welcome back to another episode <laughs> of um, My Criada, Thoughts of a Girl in a Sick World. And what a sick, sick world it is. This is your hum- humble, most loyal, most um, cute, um, smart, accomplished, sexy uh, host. Oh my god, thank you. <laughs> and i have a very special guest for you guys this has been a long time coming uh we have messed up a bunch already so we kind of know what we're gonna say yeah Yeah. (laughs) i'm here with one of my best 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 friends hi everyone i'm natalia i'm really honored and glad to be here thank you for inviting me yay okay so thank you for coming on my silly little podcast this is a podcast where we talk all the fucking shit that we want honestly it's kind of like everything because it's just like my criada thoughts of a girl in a sick world and they're just like my thoughts but here's the thing like my thoughts aren't special everyone has these thoughts and but especially girls and femmes like us yes and so i personally think your thoughts are really special i love listening to your podcast i love you so much at night while i'm going to sleep like it helps me sleep but not only that like even though I'm already asleep, I'm like, yeah, she's so right. Go off. Like, slay. Like, I you love know? you so much. I love you too. And that's what I want to do. Like, that's what I want to, like, do with this podcast. Like, like there's so many little girls out there, dude, like us, like, who didn't know what the fuck they were doing. Here. Here, dude. And it's specifically here in the valley because here it's such a, it's such a specific um, situation. Like, for example, with, like, immigrant parents. Um... Like, the double language of it all. Uh, the border right here and how we face discrimination with that. All that stuff. Um, and sometimes being, like, an oldest daughter. Just being a daughter in general. Um, a lot of shit can happen. And it's, like, not not fun. Like, we're not having fun. And we should get to vent about it, too. And just, like, be there for each other and help us out. Yeah, dude. I'm almost 23 years old and it's barely becoming more clear to me like who i am and what i agree with and what i don't you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and i know that a lot of other girls feel this way not just here in the valley but here on earth you know what i mean like it's such a young adult thing to be like Uh you know what i mean Uh uh-huh like also like we're always constantly like being told what to do yeah 100 percent all the fucking time yeah and you know you know Ay, mijita, ¿Cuándo te vas a poner a chambear? Um, te ves más gordita ahorita uh-huh. Como que te ves más llenita, ¿no? ¿Vas a agarrar otro plato? ¿De verdad? ¿Otra vez vas a comer? Mm. That's a favorite in my family Otra vez, dude In my family But that's the thing, like, you get fucking shit on for not eating Yeah And then you get shit on for eating And so, like, what the fuck? Like, okay, I'll just That's what they want us to do We They just want us to be there yeah. and not take up space and not gain weight not lose weight to not speak just to be there as a little adorno but guess what we're here to take space and i'm really happy to be on this podcast <gasps> yeah! um rip headphone users <laughs> i love you so much okay so this is my best friend one of my best friends like i said before let's talk a little bit i'm gonna just give you guys a little i'm gonna give her like the mic she is gonna talk about like you know, just a little bit about her, so you can know that again, she's not talking out of her ass either. We are both um fucking college graduates. We are educated. We are talking out of our ass. We know what the fuck we're talking about. And uh, other than that, we have like our fucking lived experiences as femmes, as fucking Latinas, as fucking um, queers. Yeah, femmes. Um, how do you say? And yeah, like. Like, we have that live experience and that knowledge, and no one can take that away from us, and you'll never know how it is, and that's why we have at least that that skill that people don't have. So, I'm going to give her the mic. So, but, obviously, like, I'm still going to ask you questions. Of course, baby girl. <laughs> First, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself, and then I'm kind of going to go into how we, you know, how we got to be what we are now. Yay! You're like another, you're like one of my arms. Um, Z and Nat lore. Z and Nat as fuck. Well. So... My name is Natalia. I'm about to be 23 years old in June. 
I'm an only child. It's a lot. It's honestly a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Because just the expectations on me. I have, I have all types of expectations for my parents, for my family. And uh, people, how you said, baby girl, uh, people were always telling me what to be. So for a while, I felt like I had to be that. Like what people wanted me to be. All my life, I struggled with people pleasing. I struggled with, you know, things like... I mean, they bully you for being different, but then they bully you for being the same. You know what I mean? For sure, dude. Like, oh my god, I have so many questions for you because, like, honestly, like, I know this because I've I've asked her like in the private and us uh, just I've just learned to know you and just like analyze you and see like how life is for you and like. Um, but I would love to like ask you these questions now. But here's one question I have for you. Have you ever been called or considered yourself like a malcriada? In some aspects, yeah, I definitely do. <laughs> Because my parents raised me up to be a certain way, hang out with a certain class of people, uh, talk a certain way, look a certain way, dress a certain way. And ever since I was small, I just didn't... I didn't want to do that and I didn't feel like that was me, you know, I don't want to dress in the Sada clothing or <laughs> like hang out with people who aren't woke, who haven't worked on themselves, who, who are just ignorantes. Yeah. I have never been that. I've always wanted to know more. I've always wanted to be more. So yes, I definitely do consider myself a malcriada because it's like, To me, I get a lot like, your parents gave you everything, like, why can't you just, like, obey them or be what they want you to be, you know what I mean? Why can't you just go back to school? Mm -hmm. Why can't you just dress a little bit more modestly? Mm -hmm. uh, why can't you go to church? I, all of my childhood I spent in private schools, but I never wanted to be in a private school. I hated it. Those were the worst times of my life. I got bullied, not just by the uh, students, also by the teachers. And I hated it. Did you, you had monjitas too, right? Yes, monjitas as fuck. Uh, from kinder to second grade, I had monjitas, dude. And they were fucked up. Like, whenever yeah. whenever we would do something bad, they would literally make us kneel in the corner of the room. Like, kneel. Like, as if we were praying. Oh, my God. That's... I think the most I was there was, like, an hour. That is so, like... And we both have fucking trauma from like this these type religious of trauma. like yeah religious trauma from catholic catholic catholicism and christianity so this is just our experience i'm sorry if this like you know we don't mean to like offend any of all this is just our experience and if you have a good you know a good relationship with god like we encourage that that's so good for you yes yes uh i'm very spiritual still i yes. just don't identify with any religion yes yes um but uh i'm gonna i'm gonna I guess I want to, like, comment off of that. Like, they made you kneel. And, like, that's so, like, the way fucking religion tries to s make women so submissive. Make, like, the female body, like, just, like, an object. Just, mm -hmm. like, to, oh, we have to bow before the god. And because in this specific, like, scripture, it's, like, a male god it's padre it's so, the father so many topics. the patriarchy yeah so many topics from that like once you use your you lose your virginity you're worthless mm -hmm. and that's the puta mm -hmm. okay it is una puta you know what i mean like so much shame that's what shame. catholicism was to me shame do you um i it's so hard for me to still escape that shame yeah i'm working on it every day mm -hmm. because uh It's internalized. It's internalized and it became part of my internal monologue as well. Yeah. You know? Uh, on to another topic. Like, I... Yeah, I just felt so much shame and I felt like everything was a sin and because of that, I was going to hell. Mm -hmm. When I was little, <gasps> I would just cry sometimes because, you know, like, little kids, like, 
we have thoughts and we have questions and you know what I mean? And just having these thoughts like the intrusive thoughts. Yes, no, but like thoughts about sexuality, which mm-hmm. is completely normal. Like masturbation, for example. Exploring your body y- is normal. Yes. It's your body. Being curious about it, you it's know? It's your body. Exactly. I get to do whatever I want with my body. Whenever I found out that masturbation was a sin, quote unquote. <laughs> Girl, I thought I was going to hell. I was like, bye. Girl, I thought I was going to hell. I thought that I was going to hell for thinking about it. I thought that I was, I was, I thought that I was going to hell for a lot of things. But now that I'm older, I just feel like hell isn't real, first of all. Yeah, I don't believe hell is real. Bitch, this is hell. Yeah, not enjoying your life is hell. Like, how is Elon Musk a thing? Like, this is hell, dude. Ew. This is hell. Ew. Like, what? Yeah, no. What? This, this whole shit is a simulation. Goodbye. But, uh... Where was I going with this? Yeah. So a little bit more about me. Uh, I finished my bachelor's. I did psychology. University of Houston. Go Cougs! Go Cougs! I miss it out there. Shout out to my shout out to my fellow Cougs. Uh, sorry, no, I have to shout out vaqueros. Yeah, you got to shout out vaqueros. Shout out to RGV. Peace Shout out. Peace up. And and uh, yeah. So I finished my degree. I did psychology. I knew I wanted to do psychology just because I'm good at people. Mm-hmm. And I thought that the degree was easy, honestly. Like, I did school and I was like, well, that was it, you know? And uh, my plan was, my plan was that I was going to go back to school and do a master's. Mm-hmm. And end up getting a mas- master's in counseling, doing something <gasps> like, yeah. Doing something like couples counseling, doing something like uh, substance abuse counseling, something like that. Fresh out of school, though, I realized... That was very psychologically, mentally, and emotionally draining. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I want to go back to school again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So for now, I'm unemployed. Uh, well, but I'm di- but I'm living my dreams. I'm living my dreams. I have my night job. <laughs> Z and I go go dance together. We are the go go goddesses. The go go goddesses. Uh, I'm of into the raving. RGV, yes. Yes, I'm into raving. I've been in. You know, I've always loved that music. I always loved like you know Swedish House Mafia and like. 2011 and 2012 like the golden age of edm if you would call it but in 2019 is when i started raving and i saw these girls dancing next to the dj on stage and i thought not only do they look amazing but i can do that too like what if like what if what if i put aside el que dirán Mm -hmm. like oh she dances at night in skippy fucking clothing you know Ah, you know mm-hmm. first of all go go dancing is not stripping anyways off topic yeah what if i believe in myself but we love strippers though yes he says oh love me some strippers love me some strippers women supporting women shake that ass get that money finish these men but if anyways you, if you're doing it safely as well and, yes if you're yes. doing it safely and you're an adult yes as well over the age as well. mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh so i told myself this was about like i started raving in 2019 and about a year and a half ago year and a half ago <laughs> year and a half ago right I said to myself, what if I do what I want for once? I've been people pleasing my whole life. What if I focus my energy onto something that I want? What I wanted was to go-go dance. I wanted to go-go dance so bad. I knew that I had it in me. I knew it was something that I could do if I put in the work and if I believe in myself and if I started to work on my confidence. So I started practicing. I started watching videos on YouTube like you know, elaborating my moves, and I ended up telling Z about it. Mm -hmm. Um, I made an episode earlier, I don't know which one it is, but I shouted out at Nat, and I was like, oh, yeah, my friend, she put me on EDM and raves, and And now we're go-go's. Z and I went to our first rave, it's about to be a year ago, May 2022, Mm -hmm. and I took her to this rave, and I was like, dude, Enjoy the music, obviously, but look at the girls. Look at the girls dancing next to the DJ. We can do that, dude. So we pull up to the rave. Z was eating those girls up, like taking videos. Those those girls ate them up. I'm still not over it. Yeah. I was like staring, like mouth open. No, literally mouth open. But I'm like, I, they, Gogos get that a lot because like people are just mesmerized by them because it's, they're, they have the hair, they do these beautiful movements, and it's beautiful, and uh, we say that, I like to say, like, that's, that's, they birthed me. Yes. They birthed me there. Now that I have been go-going, <laughs> I have two shows under my belt, I want to say that I've never been happier, because 
while I'm dancing, I'm expressing myself, I'm feeling myself, I feel beautiful, I feel talented, and it's just what I wanted to do. And if I had stayed in the ideals of this society, of my family, of el que dirán, that's what I've been calling it, I wouldn't have been happy. Yeah. I would have probably been back at school by now, paying for all those books, like at a job trying to pay for my rent and doing all of that and which is which is cool which is beautiful but it's not what I wanted to do and I'm very happy where I am right now and that's it guys that's honestly all I've got to say about me yay but I'm ready to talk about our friendship a little bit okay well um how do you say thank you so much for sharing that and again I feel like a lot of girls will a lot of younger girls might relate to that and could say could probably be wondering huh like it's okay to ask yourself hey like do i really want to do this career like maybe right now you're think you're doing something more um safe um and not gonna lie like having an education like is no is no how do you say easy task or and it's not just something like oh you don't have to do it like it's great and amazing that you have done it if you do plan to do it but it's not you already have every worth in you like this degree if you get it it's because you want to get it because it's something you love not because i have to get this and then they'll see that i'm worth something no. and then this person will will regret it and i'll prove this person right i'll prove this person wrong like honestly like that's how i chose my degree and and it's just not a good place to come one and i also want to help but i also was very delusional and but whatever i don't regret anything i learned a lot i learned a lot me too in school i learned like philosophy i feel like i'm more like philosophy is my thing um because i'm always fucking asking myself why literally why and that's what makes me a malcriada because in school, I'd be like, why are you guys teaching it like this? Why are you talking like that to this person? Oh, uh, you shouldn't say that. Why don't treat me like this teacher? Da, 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 da. Um, or you're wrong or whatever the fuck. And in my, my house also, like, like, well, why do you talk to mom like that? Well, why do you talk to me like that? Well, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Like, that's what I've always been doing. I'm just a little philosopher. And I don't regret my time because I love learning. And I feel like we're still doing that. Yeah. That's what we're still doing. We're still learning about ourselves. We're always reading. Um, right now I'm reading All About Love by Bill Hooks. Every day is a chance to learn. Mm -hmm. like, and this universe is so big. And the fact that you and I and everybody else is here right now yeah. is special. Like finding your purpose is so important especially right now as a young adult that you're like why like why am i here what am i good at you know you're here you're here to live and living includes so many things yes yeah. it's not just one thing believing in yourself yes. stepping out of your comfort zone you've got to do it yeah you won't regret it that's why um, i love having you yes i feel like and uh, how do you say okay this is so this is how i view nat i'm gonna paint you guys a little picture of Nat and I in high school. Yes, let's let's talk about our friendship. Yes. So we were in a little we were in a little dance class. There was a little rivalry moment, uh, whatever. Uh, but then I had Nat in another class, and I was like, "Fuck." Tell them. Okay. So me and Z, we weren't on the best of terms. Let's just put it that way. And I ended up getting her in a class, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and she ended up coming up to me with a cookie. Those yeah. those cookies were so good. Actually. Yeah. These cookies that they sold at lunch, they were so delicious. So she comes up to me with this cookie, and she was just like, dude, you know what? Let's put everything to the side. I want to be your friend. I think you said something like that. Yeah. I want to be your friend. I um, was like, here's a peace offering. She said that. She said, here's here's the peace offering. And guess what? I took it. It's one of the best decisions of my life, having you in my life. I love having you in my life. I love you, too. And I was like, that doesn't really happen. I'm someone who holds the grudge, dude. I don't know what the fuck came over me. me too. I don't know what the fuck came over me, and I was like... Like, it was just because I missed you. Because I was attract I was so attracted to, like, you as a person. I was like, this, this is a good person. Like, like, I... How do you say? Like, when I saw her, she was just, like, a light. Like, she would be like, hi, guys. Like, 
um, do you want gum? And I was like, oh my god, yes! And I thought that was just the nicest thing. Like, someone would just be like, here's gum. Like, I guess I just wasn't shown a lot of kindness growing up. Um, you weren't either. But she was still this happy girl. And I was just a little emo girl. Like, I don't know if you... Like, wore the same big jacket every day with the same, like, little vans every day. And big, poofy hair just there. And then Nat is just this little super femme, super girly. You can't forget the box eyebrows, though. Oh, the the, the 2014 eyebrows. Dude, me too, me too, though. We all want to do that. We all Shout out to Anastasia Beverly Hills for that dip brow. Should have fucking taken it away from me. But anyways, <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah. And we've been best friends ever since. Yeah. She sat with us at lunch, and I just haven't been able to separate myself from you, like, you just make my life better in every way. I love you so much. I love you too. Yeah. We're always like, we kind of, we kind of, we literally synced the other day. Yeah. We were, no, like today. Yes. We were like, no, the other day too. Like I sent her a TikTok that related to something that she was thinking about, like in that instant. Yeah. Which we're going to talk about later. Yeah. She called, she called me shocked with her mouth, with yeah. her hand covering her mouth. Yeah. And I was like, I knew, I just knew. She knew what I was thinking. And then it's on so the crazy. way here. On the way here, I was listening to this song, Show Me Love. Tell me why when I get here, she's humming it. I'm like, you've got to show me. It was so crazy, but yeah, but yeah. I just felt, and the thing is, like, I just grabbed it from my memory. Like, Nat came, and I just got the rave energy, and I, I just started... The rave energy. Literally, because she's always playing a fucking house and all the time. Like, yeah. in her, in her I put car. I put you on, baby. Yeah, you literally put me on. Like, I love it. Like, literally, like, like, like I don't know, I don't know. Like, I it's think so... You're... I just I know. know how to say it. It's, it's so, so free. Mm, pussy. Pussy, freeing, yes. uh, enlightened, yes. I think everything. You, Peace, sorry. love, sex. I think orgies. you, yes, hello, orgies. <laughs> I think you mentioned in another podcast that uh, something like that you used to not like EDM or that you yeah. used to shit on EDM or she just wasn't aware of what it was. I wasn't, I was aware of the mainstream because that's all, because that's what I, I was a kid. Like I didn't really like, and I was like an emo kid, so I would just listen to rock and emo and like punk and uh, like, like uh, how do you say? And yeah, I love, I ate that shit up. I'm not gonna lie, but like I was also very, I didn't dip into the the mainstream stuff because I was like, mm, all mainstream stuff is bad, but uh, I didn't know all the good stuff because it's always like the house and techno is live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Nat showed me, like, insane music that told, like, super crazy stories. Mm-hmm. And then the bass and the fucking... It's, yeah, yeah. House and Techno is about the feeling. Like, the way you feel. Like, the music taking control of your body. You know? And it's a constant beat that you can always dance to. Yes. So And then sometimes it throws you off a little bit. So it's like, ooh, ooh, I'm trying to catch the beat. Ooh, ah, ah, oh. and it's really fun. The environment of the raves. Oh, yeah. Everyone's, like... Community. Yeah, it's very commun- commun- community-based. But obviously, there's people who always ruin the fucking vibe. The pushers. Yeah. The people who don't say, excuse me. Yeah. Oh, let's talk about that one girl, remember, at Seismic? Oh, my God. What were, yeah, we literally got, like, basically harassed. Uh, so we were walking out of this, wait, wave. <laughs> wait. We were talking, we were walking out of this, rave, wait, right? And we were, wait, we were walking out of this, uh, wait. This foreign ass dude, I think he was from Brazil or something, right? Yeah. He comes up and talks to us, and we start talking to him in Spanish, right? Me and Z, yeah. minding our own business, making friends. Yeah. And this... This vieja. <laughs> Z, tell, tell them what she said. Okay. Like, me and Z were talking to this guy in Spanish, right? Yeah. And then this random vieja walking in front of us says... She was like... Oh my god, you speak Spanish? Like, Tora? <laughs> she was like, she was like, you sound like Dora right now. Haha, <laughs> don't this top me backpack. Haha, <laughs> she was like, like she like was that. like super high, drunk, whatever. What doesn't even ex- doesn't even excuse it. And me. Oh yeah, she wasn't having it. I was scared for a second. I wasn't like I'm very confrontational. Nat isn't. So I was like, I'm not- confrontational with my words, but not with my actions. I was confrontational with my pussy. No. <laughs> No, I was like, not this racist ass bitch. Yeah. And I was like, Z, Z. And then Z. she was like, Z, no, it's not worth it. Yeah, I, I was like, ah! I did that. Like, it's not worth it. Look at me. Yeah. Look at me. It's not worth Look it. Look at me. Girl. No. <laughs> 
because these feas can't get on our, on our fucking level. You know what I mean? They're just jealous that the that the Brazilian guy like talked to us and not her. Yeah, as fuck. But why would he talk to you? But it's, ugly ass racist asshole. But it's like we're literally bonding because we we both speak uh, Spanish, and he also spoke Portuguese. Super sexy. I hope he's having a good day today. <laughs> but anyways, but anyways, uh, I was so yeah. cold. I didn't even see. I'm married. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But yeah, raving uh, has brought us closer together, and I love that for us, baby girl. I yeah. love living life with you. I love yes. raving with you. I love you so much. And can't wait for May 26. We have a rave. Ah! We also have catches. A, catches. Yes. Actually, and we also no. have an upcoming show. Uh, the May 26 is like a rave that we're going to go have fun at. But yeah. we also have an upcoming show. Details to be determined. A uh, go-go show. Go and watch us because support women. Support local baddies. Yeah, like, like I don't There's not a lot of like shows with dancers around here. Yes, so. almost none. Unless you, yeah. So if you wanna be entertained, yes, we will. We'll do that for you. Yes, of course. Follow us on socials uh, at Nat Gogo on Instagram. Instead of O's though, it's zeros. So Nat goes go zero. Nat G zero G zero. I'll I'll link it correctly oh, so they'll know. Perfect. They'll know. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Okay. So, but. Yeah, so that's us in a nutshell. Yes, yes, yes. We're like it only took us twenty five minutes. We're peanut butter and jelly, but I don't, but I don't like peanut butter. So I'm I jelly. Like peanut butter. I know you do. I'm jelly. You're peanut butter. As fuck. Or what else goes together? Black pink. <laughs> <laughs> Cheech and Chong. Cheech. Cosmo and Wanda. Cosmo and Wanda. Burgers and fries. Uh, salt and pepper. We're salt and pepper. Yeah. For sure. What was I gonna do? Uh, oh yeah, the I don't topic. Work, I, yes, today's topic. It only, so, took, it only took us twenty six minutes to get to the topic. Period. No, yeah, that's good progress. Okay, so today's topic. So Nat and I have been around an environment mm-hmm. all of our lives, basically, mm-hmm. um, where we encounter a certain breed of guy, and re- but recently, it's like kind of more like duh to point them out sometimes but people still fall for it Mm -hmm. um but uh we were i always talk about it on tiktok as well i was like those like alt boys those alt boys who like pretend like they're like feminist but like they're still like fucking toxic and misogynistic and whatever nat and i were talking about it and then she i believe she coined the term i like to refer to it as baddie baiting yeah so you want to talk the talk, you know, mm-hmm. you want to make yourself look woke. You want to make yourself look spiritual. You want to make yourself look like a, I don't even want to say high value man, but uh, what's an, what could be another word for that? Like, like you are worth not, it. Like you're not worth- like you want to just seem like a gu- a girl's guy. I guess. Yes. Like, like a guy that's for the girlies. Yes, exactly. But you're not. You're still, you still objectify women. Yes. You still treat women like shit. You still are a misogynist and a women hater. You don't actively protect the women in your community. Yes, so you want to talk the talk, but you don't want to walk the walk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I feel like because of all these different subcultures are like rising up. Mm-hmm. Um, and now, like, fashion is very, um, attainable because you can just look up on TikTok how to dress alt boy or this boy or whatever boy, and they will show you because people are nice, but there's people who aren't about it, and that's what this is all about. So, today's episode is... Baddie baiting. Baddie baiting. Baddie baiting us. You're trying to reel in the baddies. You want a cute, a cute, a pretty girl who's smart, who's independent, who... Woke. uh Uh-huh. Quote, unquote, woke. All that stuff. So she knows, like, you know how she'll treat you. You know, you can... It's just, like, finding different ways to manipulate women. You're just adapting. Also, the status of it. The status of, like, the support of women because women support gacho Mm -hmm. like they support like the fangirls dude like that makes people like taylor says fangirls shout out the fangirls like they make careers they make empires yeah 
So with the having, support of women, having a woman by your side is a status symbol, mm -hmm. and a that most and a lot of men want the status, but they don't want to treat the woman right. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, they want to be the ones take being taken care of, which is okay. Like, but you also got to take care of us. Yeah, like maintain us. Yeah, spoil us. Continue dating us even though you were already together. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I guess like the person that I am most familiar with doing that is my ex. Mm -hmm. um, but how do you say? Like... Yeah, like he would just like pretend to be interested in what the fuck I was talking about. But like just be like, but then turn around and be like, nah, fuck that. And I yo de pendeja like I didn't know. And I, I thought... No de pendeja. No, yeah. I Because I was so like... You were baddie baited, I baby was, girl. I was on another level like of thinking. I was like, okay, well, I understand because he comes from this and this and this and that. But he can't understand this. Like, oh, well, bitch, I understand that you come from... I don't want to like put him on blast or anything. But like, motherfuckers, like parents, like went through hard shit so i sympathize with that i sympathize with like the hard work and all that shit right but it's like he didn't sympathize with me like oh i like fuck quote unquote fucked up i did this or did that whatever oh no like you followed this guy fuck you Ugh. die oh, let's break up <laughs> like you know what i mean like it was like what the fuck like like, that's the thing, like, when you get, like, smart, intelligent women, sometimes, like, these women are also very, they're, we're very sympathetic. We're very, very, very sympathetic, and because we have a level of sim sympathy that I feel like a lot of men just don't understand. I don't know. You know what I mean? Yes, baby girl. Let's talk about it. I've had my fair share of dating mm. uh, in the past years, and... Ugh. It's just like, at first, everything's great. Mm. You obviously want to put up your best front whenever you are trying to conquest someone, conquistar a alguien, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, the ugly comes out sooner or later. You know what I mean? Like, first, it's the love bombing, the gifts, the... The showering of compliments, the posting all over social media, the, the good morning every day, every day, without every day. fail, yeah. and this is like before you're even dating. Yes, and then it's the all right. So we're exclusive, so you can't talk to anybody, and I I'm not gonna talk to anyone either. But wait, okay, so we're dating? No, 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 we're not dating. We're not dating. I'm still getting to know you. Not even I'm still getting to know you. I'm not ready for a relationship. Okay, I so I'm single. Dude, and the thing is, like, they, the, the fact that they say, I love you. Oh, yeah. They say, I love you, like, so, so soon. Yeah. If someone says, I love you really, really soon, and specifically if this guy, this person's a guy, it might, you know, not be the best thing. It just, like, and, and this is if you don't know this person at all, also. <laughs> and, uh, I lost my train of thought. So... Give yeah. it a few months, babe. A few months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At and least. De que just I've had I've had a lot of experience, uh, and now it's easy to, you know, see who's real and who isn't. Like I can call out bluff and call out bullshit on someone. Not enough to the point that I'm like, you know what? Let's work on this. No, mm -hmm. I've tried the work on it. Mm -hmm. If they show their true colors, listen, listen, and don't stay or settle move on ghost block do whatever the fuck you need put yourself first because these people expect chance upon chance upon chance upon chance when they won't even give you one chance with anything uh i dated this guy in college at first we were just you know having fun having a good time but not putting any labels on then quarantine hit and i came back to school he pulled up to my apartment all talking about, listen, I had feelings for you the entire time. Uh, I thought about you nonstop. I couldn't stop thinking about you. My first 
the first thing I said was, why didn't you call me? Why didn't you text me? Why didn't you tell me that you were thinking about me? I wrote a song about you. You want to hear it? <laughs> well, you know what I mean? Just all of that. And he gave me an ultimatum, dude. He gave me an ultimatum. He was like, you have a week. Either you think about what I said and you become my girlfriend or we never speak again. That's it. Okay. And as... As he was saying, was saying, as he was saying, as he was saying, right? Uh, <laughs> with the consciousness level I had at the time, I thought, wow, somebody wants to be my boyfriend? Somebody wants me to be their girlfriend? Oh my God, this is an opportunity. Like, I thought of it like that at the time. But just because somebody is your significant other or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your whatever, doesn't mean that they're going to respect you, doesn't mean that you're going to be happy. As soon as... As we put that label, boyfriend and girlfriend, the princess treatment stopped. Mm. The taking out on dates stopped. The phone calls, the good morning texts, the just literally, let's just call it the bare minimum, stopped. Yeah. But what didn't stop though is the, why are you going out? Why are you going out without me? How come you always want to go out with your friends? Well, maybe it's because when I invite you to hang out with my friends, you say that you're busy or you say that you don't want to. What happened to all that energy you had before? The I want you to be mine. The I want to post you all over social media. I want the world to know about us. What happened to all of that? What happened to all of that? And that's just like a tra a direct translation like in that behavior is... Baddie baiting. Yeah. Like it's like, here I'm pretending to be the perfect guy. Mm -hmm. um, I'm saying all the right things, but they don't actually mean them. So we have created a little list we're little list girlies yeah of body baiting prevention slash signs so i just number one if this list helps anyone that's what we want yeah like, literally uh being younger and not having this guidance obviously nobody is born with it so i hope that it's getting out there to the people that need it that's yeah. all i that's all i want yeah for sure for sure okay so one they're super unclear with their intentions. Okay, so when we're talking, little like side note for, for just to get more specific. When I say body baiting, I say like someone who is like pretends to to pose as a part of a culture or a philosophical way of thinking. Like for example, someone who claims they're a feminist, someone who claims like they're queer, someone who claims or like they're an ally, not queer, but an ally, someone who claims that um how do you say that they're a part of this like they're alt or they're this type of person and like oh these boys don't hurt people like that's like what the like people are saying a lot like oh like skater boys aren't mean no the emos will protect us the punk boys will protect us like there's truth in that in the original people and these other like subcultures um but recently there's people who are faking it posing, <laughs> posing as acting. that acting like they are these good like these different just to be different and like no like no so little little yeah that's a little side note yes but that they're unclear with their intentions so like if someone wants you for real they're gonna tell you and it's gonna be clear you're not going to be left questioning, like, ah, oh, like, does this person like me? Am I just being Delulu? Like, this yeah. person is going to be clear. They're not going to say things like, let's link, let's, mm -hmm. let's hang out. Yeah. Like, it's going to be something more like, hey, I want to take you out on a date. Hey, I want to get to know you. Hey, uh... I want to know what your interests are. I want to know what your goals are. I want to know what you dream about. Like yeah, like they're interested to in like they're interested in you as a person, mm -hmm. and not as like an object or a token. Do you know what I mean? Like, for example, like when my husband DM'd me, like the first time he ever DM'd me, well, the first time he met me, he was literally like he acted like he'd never seen like a girl before. <laughs> And I was like, what the fuck? Like, no one had ever treated me like that. Like, I just, I wasn't, I wasn't treated like that. Because, again, like, a little background. Like, I was just, like, a little 
a little emo girl like and back then it wasn't cool to be emo you know what i mean like um we didn't have tiktok oh my god i would kill for tiktok when i was young it would have like permanently altered our brain chemistry but like yeah but like yeah yeah, yeah. but like it would be worth it because at least it'd be cool <laughs> but I'm kidding. Of course. no like no um but like that's how it was back then so i never had been treated like that it was only recently like there was like a revival of like of that style and stuff like that um my husband not my now husband literally was like whoa hey what's your name huh? like that's how he approached me and do you see how that is cute and not scary and not like intimidating for example like let me get you on snapchat let me get you on insta like baddie baiting that how how is that like how is that cute like it's not cute and like that's how my husband like was like to me he was just like oh you're cute like he found me on his he asked my name he found me on instagram he dm me hello i thought you were super pretty da -da -da -da. i would love to take you on a date da -da -da -da. Uh, and then yeah like intentions clear intentions were clear um and honestly he was really 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 ballsy and then i told him no <laughs> <laughs> and you know what this motherfucker said he said because i had a boyfriend at the time and i was like oh that's really sweet but i have a boyfriend and yeah he was like, oh, okay, well, I wish you, I wish you guys well. Oh. And, um, da -da -da -da. he was like, I wish you well. I hope that goes really good for you. And I was like, thanks. He could have said, could your boyfriend fight? Yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> would have been hot. But anyways, <laughs> but anyways. Um, he, but he was a sweetheart. I know he wanted to. He still is, baby girl. No, I feel like he, like, he, I feel like first, he, like, he did, probably did witchcraft. He was like, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. Mm -hmm. On, like, on, like, my ex or something. And then we broke up or something. Because... Because he kept following me. I didn't follow him. <laughs> I love that. Um, I don't know. He's so cute. And like the minute he saw that I was single, he was like, hey, the minute. The minute. And I was like, oh, hey. <laughs> I love that for you. But anyways, their intent. if someone likes you, their intentions will bleed. Will bleed. 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 Bleed clear. Bleed clear. <laughs> Your intentions will they'll be clear. Yes. Like you won't be left questioning. Does this person like me? Like... Am I being Delulu? Like, am I making shit up? Like, you won't be left feeling like that. 100%. Yeah. Okay. Next. I have here, well-groomed. Plus, bonus, if it has good style. <laughs> <laughs> what do I write? Like, Frankenstein? <laughs> it's like, okay. So, okay, Matt. Do you have any experiences with, with ungroomed men? They're too disgusting to even talk about. But <laughs> let's, uh, I'm going to give you guys an example. Okay. So, just because a guy has their nails painted. Oh, yeah, 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 that one. You know, you think a guy has their nails painted and it's like, oh, wow, like, he doesn't have fragile masculinity. Like, yeah. You know. They don't think that deep. They're not thinking that deep. No. No, no, no. Uh, so, yeah, if a guy has their nails painted, it doesn't mean, it doesn't give them a pass that they're not racist, they are not women haters, they're not transphobic, mm -hmm. they're not homophobic, mm -hmm. they're not racist, they can still be all those things and just want to have the nail painted, the nails painted to reel in the baddies. Or they they do believe in all that mm -hmm. and their but their friends say that's bullshit and they don't call out their friends on it. Like maybe they're allies for whatever 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 and they're not homophobic and they're not misogynistic but their friends are. And they don't do anything to change that. They don't care because it doesn't affect them. Or call call them out when they say shit or defend people. Yeah. Yeah. So that makes you an accomplice. Yeah, literally. Do better. Call out your friends. Yeah, like, how do you say, like, here in the night scene, like, um, we, like, there's a lot of guys who just don't. Who you guys are like are in the quote unquote alt scene, right? Like then why then if you guys get it, you guys are for the cost for the whatever. But you're out here being pendejos, fucking like being creeps and like harassing people. Like what the fuck? Anyways, moving on. Oh, okay. Here's something I want to say. Don't get fooled by just like a a a string of pearl necklaces. Like, if they just have an, a pearl necklace, but, like, the rest of their outfit is trash, like, I guess I just want to say, like, criticize these men as much as y'all criticize women mm -hmm. and femmes. Like, as much as y'all hate on women and femmes, like, criticize these these men. Like, hold them to the impossible standard they hold they hold us against. Yeah. Why should they get, like, a free, like, a, an applause because they wore, like, um, an, 
a skirt that doesn't match their fucking outfit and like nails that don't match their fucking outfit like they're not clowned for that they're celebrated and they call us out for everything like everything an example is like i have really deep eye bags it's just something that i have and that i was born with Mm -hmm. the amount of times a man has told me you look tired did you not sleep last night you look like you haven't slept in days like, she put a little makeup on it. Yeah, the fact that they, they have the nerve to comment on our bodies and how we exist. Yeah, like, oh, you don't look like what they look like in porn? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, like, oh, literally that. It's literally that. And then, like, yeah. And then now that like, there's, like, this whole, like, but, like, honestly, like, I, I guess, like, shout out to, like, when I said, like, oh, back then it wasn't really cool to be emo. Like, you were weird for being emo. You were just like, oh, the kid who cuts or whatever the fuck. Um, Listen to scream and they, yeah, and they bullied the fuck out of you. Um, now people are just sexualizing them. I feel like now yeah. you guys are just se- a lot of people are just sexualizing the aesthetic, like not like the girlies and like the girlies and the femmes who like like actually are this, but like the people around us are just sexualizing us super like more, more now. Ugh. The amount of times I've seen on Twitter like straight ass fucking misogynistic ass dudes be like need me a goth bitch with daddy issues yeah like, like y'all- okay you just want the sexiness yeah you don't want you know the real which like so what if she has daddy issues it's like a little stereotype right but yeah. it's like an objectification it's not like you don't want the woman you don't want to take care of us yes. you just want a goth bitch with daddy issues because guess what she gives that sloppy toppy mm-hmm. and you, you know and you don't want to deal with our mental health you don't want to deal fun. with like our our like fucking deep emotions that we feel like a thousand times no. like the girlies with bpd the girlies with bipolar disorder the girlies <laughs> with an- like a shit ton of anxiety you guys just say oh you're just she's just so difficult like why don't you learn her diagnosis babe why don't you learn that but you guys don't you guys like they're like oh she's just a bitch and she's just like treating me da 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 these are the men that we're talking about Mm -hmm. and if the men who don't do this they know they don't fucking do this but we're calling these men body baiters Mm -hmm. so there's a distinction okay watch out they're out there yes (laughs) i love that you said that because yes like they just treat women like like an adornment Mm -hmm. and honestly that these leads this kind of leads back to like what my mom used to tell me like you know what my mom told me she told me el hombre es el rey de la casa Y la mujer es su corona. Boo, tomato, tomato, Boo, tomato, tomato. Dude. And yo de chiquita, like, I was like, I don't want to be a fucking crown. Like, I, I was like, what about the queen? Like, she was like, oh, well. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, si, sí, también la reina, pero es un ejemplo. I'm like, but why do you, why is a woman an object? Why is, I'm not just here to adorn my husband. And honestly, like, like now as a married woman, that's happened to me a lot. Like, a lot. Like, people are nicer to Diego because he has a wife. We said it, that mm-hmm. a woman is a social, a status symbol. Yep, 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 yep. And that's what... And the thing is, this is nothing new. It's just getting mashed up and manifesting in modern times. It's mm-hmm. still the same thing. Yeah. Patriarchy, misogyny, uh, homophobia, all that shit. All, all that the shit. above. Everything. Okay. Next. You want to talk about this one? The language? Oh, yes. Okay. This is a... I guess a red flag slash a uh, sign that you're being baddie baited. If he uses F slurs, mm-hmm. N words, mm-hmm. calls women bitches or females, mm-hmm. or you hear in him in a derogatory ass yeah. way, yeah. not like bitch, not no. like that, like that fucking these bitches, bitch, these bitches, that female, these females, they, these females belong the like not in the nice way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, if you catch him or hear him slut shaming somebody else. Guess what? He's going to turn right back around and slut shame you. Yeah. Protect yourself. Don't get baddie baited. And that's like a... No, I'm going to talk about that in another percent, an episode. I'm going to call it Pick Me Rehabilitation. Mm. A different take on Pick Me's that you might not be expecting. Can't so. wait to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyways. Uh, yeah, like, for sure, like, the language, like, these um, men are taught is kind of like a dog whistle. Um, like... It's weird because I feel like a lot of guys, like the girls hear it. Like the girls are like, oh, but that's just how men talk. Like boys, a lot of boys like down here in the valley, specifically Latino boys, like who aren't black, like think they have the right to say the N word. They they, they get to just say the N word. And on behalf of like fucking 
uh, non-black Latinos, we apologize. Yeah. But so sorry, yeah. we don't blame them. Yeah, like if you're fucking, yeah, like don't don't give them the benefit of the doubt. Don't say like, oh, that's how he grew up. Like, no, fuck fucking no, call bro. Him out fuck on no, it. call him out on it. Um, it's important for for us to do that because yeah, like the fuck, no one, yeah, period. Okay, the next one we have. They treat you different in front of their friends. Mm-hmm. So, behind closed doors, you get the princess treatment, and they're great, and it's just going well. It makes you feel good, right? They but get the, all they get all the lingo that you throw at him. Yes. They know all the TikTok lingo. They know all the Twitter lingo. They throwing know all around, the woke lingo. Yes, throwing around the inside jokes y'all have together. Slay, all girl. Yes. Period. Yes. Slay, bestie. Mm-hmm. But in front of their friends, however. What's up, bro? No, yeah, yeah, bro. What's this up? my bitch. Yeah, yeah. No, they ignore you, yeah. or they don't pay attention to you. They don't introduce you to your friends. Or even worse, put you down in front of them. They make they make, make you look small. They make you make fun of you in front of their friends. They mm-hmm. make you the butt of the joke because it's so awkward and they're not talking to you. He's not introducing them. They're not giving you a fucking in. What the Boring. fuck are you supposed to do, bitch? Dumbasses alarm bells you're being bad evaded and the thing is like in a lot of these like um like subcultures like there's the i guess the ones i'm more familiar with is like the alt boys and the gamer boys like uh there's a lot of like boys like the internet just collides and then there's like a bunch of baddie gamer girls just eating it up in the scene and then like their boyfriends are like incels and it's like, Ew. why are you with him? No. Get like, up, sis. Like, no. Like, like, I understand that you guys have so much sympathy for, like, people. But the best thing you could do for them is to tell them, you know what? No. You don't deserve my support. Because you are perfectly, you're a perfectly able person to do it on your own, if you are. Um, you know what I mean? Like, you can look for your own therapist. You have access. If you can do all the fucking gaming shit, hacking, whatever the if fuck. If you have all the time for that. Then you can look up therapy near me. And do better. Yeah. If you can spend like uh, a shit ton of money into games, like 60 bucks. If you can spend like, because games are fucking expensive. And therapy is n- is like what? My therapy for better help is like 80? Like you can, you can go to therapy, babe. If you can spend money for video games, you can invest in fucking therapy. Shut the fuck up. And listen, they don't want to do it because guess what? It's not valuable to them. Because therapy is difficult. Mm -hmm. Therapy is uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Therapy is stepping out of your comfort zone. And men don't feel that on a regular basis. No, they definitely (laughs) don't. (laughs) They'd rather drown it out with video games. Yeah. And listen, we get it. We get that. We understand that feeling. Mm -hmm. And... This is just us telling these men to get help and to do better. And no, you don't deserve um, a partner if you're not going to treat that partner right. And it's not their job for that partner to fix you. A hundred percent. You don't get, you don't get the fucking like manic girl to fucking fix you. Like you guys are both people who need to work on their own shit. Mm -hmm. And men, the way a lot of hetero men like, like, depend on women to do that emotional fucking labor for them is too much take fucking accountability now (laughs) okay next we have avoids the word date and only invites you to his place Mm. super so oh my god i have a story i think we yeah yeah, you have a story Mm -hmm. i already kind of touched on this anyway uh just let's link let's hang out okay is it a date is it not a date like intentions not clear yeah like especially if like you don't know the person (laughs) that's fine like if y'all been snapping and if y'all been dming let's hang out like okay okay like make your intentions more clear like i'm not a mind reader yeah and then i don't even want to go into that but anyways what's your story baby girl so like i was on tinder for a very very short amount of time it just was i just wasn't successful on, on dating apps um and but my experiences from it i only got like those guys only got those guys like the dm would be some be the first like message would be something super romantic and da, 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 da. and then i'd be like oh cool or whatever the fuck and then next he'd say okay but you want to fuck i'd be like okay bye block you know what i mean that's fine 
Um, because at the time I wasn't looking for that. I was actually looking for like a like a relationship. I wasn't just looking to like fuck around at the time. At the time, okay. I've had my eras, but and then there was this. But there was this one guy. I won't say his name, obviously. Who literally like never said his intention he'd be talking to me all the time um tell me that he he that he doesn't talk to other girls like uh other talk that eh, he doesn't talk to other girls the way he talks to me and then he would be like oh yeah i just came up from a date and be like ah okay so okay i guess and then i just never stopped then i just stopped talking to him because i was like oh whatever like you know deserve my time so i stopped talking to him good thing because it was like literally like if I would have stayed talking to him and I wouldn't have given my husband the attention that he deserved, um, how do you say? Then I'd probably be talking, have a situation trip with that guy. And it would have not have ended up nice. Fuck those situationships. Also, I just want to add that if you are on dating apps looking for just to hook up or just to have a good time, good for you. Mention that in your bio, bro. Save yeah, no. people time. Yeah, obviously. Like, be clear with your intentions. We've said it. No multiple shame. times and no like shame. all better to you only if you're being clear with your intentions if you're just trying to lead people on and mess with people's heads and make people confused and gaslight them then you don't deserve to be on those dating apps yeah literally anyways moving on yeah so yeah like so like that guy didn't like say like oh let's go on a date he was just like oh maybe someday we can see each you other can see each other but he still be talking to me he keep me for entertainment so another yeah. line another line when am i gonna see you how about whenever you fucking ask me to? Yeah, like, you see, like, all and the pattern with this is, like, they're putting all the responsibility on us. Mm-hmm. Like, you you tell me the date. You tell me where. I don't know. You tell me. Because I don't care as long as I see, I get to just see you. Like, that doesn't, that doesn't sound as good as you think it does, babe. Mm-hmm. Okay. Says, okay, and then here's the other situation where he says he's entreating you to a date and he doesn't pay. He said, <laughs> yeah, they say, let's go on a date. All right, okay. But then the check comes, he's trying to get you to pay or to split halvesies or whatever. Okay, then that's not a date, babe. Mm-hmm. That's two friends hanging out. Yeah, like, how do you say, if I ever invited someone on a date, that's what I would think. A hundred percent. Like, I've invited people out on dates and I pay. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what date means. Yeah. It's like, you're taking a gamble, but also like, it's 20 bucks. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. You'll be and fine. like, obviously that's what dates are for. Getting to know the other person and seeing if, you know, they interest you and the conversation flows and shit. Yeah. That's what a date is. And you just happen to eat food. Yeah. It just happened to be over food. Like, that's it, baby. baby it doesn't boy. even have to be food. Like It could just be, like, Froyo. Yeah, Froyo walking around at the mall. Yeah. But, yeah. Literally. And, oh, and the fucking one day, the one date that I did go, it was and it was literally a date. He was like, yes, da, 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 meet me here. And it was the fucking convention center. Mm-hmm. And he just fucking walked me around the whole place, didn't offer to buy me anything, and was just venting about his ex the whole time. Oh, fuck no. And I was like, okay, well, Bye. Talking about their ex is also a uh, baddie baiting red flag. Just saying. Yeah. He's just hopping on to the next girl for a th- for therapy. Mm-hmm. As fuck. <laughs> okay. Next. Putting down slash degrading femme-dominated work. This is what you wanted to talk about. Mm-hmm. So let me give you guys the perfect example. This was back in January. I was dating this guy. He was my boyfriend. Everything was going great. Everything was going great. I felt supported. I felt listened to. I felt like, wow, the okay. I felt a good. I felt a good one. Not that I felt a good one. Uh, I found a good one out of the sea of frogs. You know what I mean? Tell me why. Stinky frogs. Stinky frogs. I was telling him that I was so excited. I had scored my first go-go gig. So I tell him, hey babe, guess what? I'm super excited. Uh, you know I'd been wanting to do this for a long time. I finally scored my first go-go gig. And I'm going to dance for these DJs. And I'm so excited. Like, I literally can't contain my excitement. I'm so happy and so thankful. I'm not even joking. He says, What a job. Anyone can just get up on stage and dance. It's the way that my... Idiot. 
idiot. It's the way that all of my interest for him, all of the moments that we shared, all of those conversations went out the window. My heart just sank. I was like, wow, thought you were different. So I responded this. I told him, wow, you're so rude. I know that you're interested in photography. He was very interested in photography and he did some of that too. Imagine if you told me, oh my God, babe, I'm so excited. I just got this gig. I'm gonna do photography for this wedding. And I told you, photography? Anyone can just press a fucking button on a camera. And he stayed quiet for a fat minute trying to save himself. He actually did try to save himself. I'm so sorry. I'm just not aware of what go-go dancers do, like teach me, all of that shit. I said, I'm not going to teach you. You just dug yourself into a hole. It's going to take me a while to forgive you for this. I ended up deciding not only that it's unforgivable, it's not somebody that I wanted to give, my, give the time of day or my energy. Mm -hmm. So I ended up cutting it off. I told him, you know what? I don't like that you said that. I don't feel supported by you. And this isn't going to work out for me. I'm sorry. It's the way that he... Me hizo un pedo, wey. Me hizo un pedo as if he didn't say that shit. What else was I supposed to do? Teach him? Teach him to be woke? Yeah. Teach him to be supporting? No. Yeah. That's what you go to fucking therapy for. Go to therapy. Yes. So yeah, that's my example. You have anything to say about this baby girl? Um... yeah like how do you say in the past like when i like it showed like interest for like wanting to be like because okay i'm not gonna lie like i actually did want to be a stripper <laughs> like actually and i would support you no matter what i love you so much and i would go and watch you and throw I hundreds you. at you ah! mm. and like i actually didn't want to be a stripper um but i get obviously like back then i wasn't aware of like the dangers of uh i i guess i don't know if you consider stripping sex work but i guess sometimes it could be um but yeah it's very there's a lot of dangers in it and i just don't have the mental capacity to do that so i was just itching for something else and i know that if i was in a, my past relationship i wouldn't have been able to been a go-go um and I'm in a healthy relationship now where, like, my partner doesn't think that he owns my fucking body. Um, and I'm able to express myself in a safe way. A safe way for me. Um, and just, I guess, anything I want to say on that, like, subject is that there are people who will understand you. Mm -hmm. So never feel like, oh, I have to stay with this person because he's the only person who understands me. No. Don't settle. You are a complex human being. And with so much, like, knowledge and so much experience, like, as femmes and women, like, we are, we're literally discriminated, like, from birth. And then on top of that, all the other identities you have on, you know what I mean? So, it's, it's just, it is possible to find someone else that will take care of you and you don't have to put in an insane amount of work in fixing a person that's not your job um yeah you can grow together but they have to already have be, be in that decision mm -hmm. that they're going to improve and they want to improve you know so yeah that's what i want to say and then we have the this is a signs that you're being baddie baited slash sign not signs uh prevention of yeah baddie baiting so false promises is a really big one because i have uh, the i can't wait for you to meet my friends i can't wait for you to meet my family i can't wait to meet your friends that never happens mm -mm. like i feel like people use this like as an emotional tug yeah an emotional manipulation tactic yeah like oh like i'm sh introducing you to like close people when you know you're like the fifth girl probably like <laughs> or like i can't wait to treat you like a queen i can't wait to post you all over my socials i can't wait for my friends to know about us why why wait yeah like fucking okay let's go meet them right now yeah that ass yeah watch out watch out besties watch out baddies yeah like 
his friends should already know of you of course before 100 percent. like 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 he should have been like oh i'm thinking this girl's cute like you know what i mean like if you're the person you're looking like at is like not like very like in tune with their friends and they're like that's a really bad thing because then they go they're like oh who's the leader of the pack and then for the last one Mm -hmm. we have them not wanting to meet your friends Mm -hmm. and he brings you around your friends your friends (laughs) he brings you around his friends yeah 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 but when it's time to meet your friends oh no i'm busy oh no i can't oh no i don't think they'll like me maybe it's because they can tell the girlies can tell they're gonna call you out on it because we know an asshole when we see one yeah and then i guess like this is another form of like again like form of isolating you like oh i don't want to hang out with your friends or like oh because da, 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 da. he's be like it's a way to put you against like oh well your friends are me oh well your friends don't know what they're talking about i'm more complex than your friends i know you better than your friends because we have sex like that's not true 100 <laughs> percent no so yeah those are the things that we have covered oh my god we made it to an hour i can't believe we made it <laughs> i thought that we weren't gonna make it past 25 minutes but hey we did it nat thank you so much for being on my podcast thank you I so will, much for inviting me i will invite you more because we have just a lot to talk about i mean clearly a lot. <laughs> an hour and five minutes worth bestie yes ma'am okay thank you so much for listening uh love yourself respect yourself believe in yourself uh no matter what anyone says, it's your life and do what you want with your life. That's that's the end. That's my message. Yes, ma'am. Thank you guys so much for listening to another episode of Malcriada, Thoughts of a Girl in a Sick World. And what a sick, sick world it is. This is sick. <laughs> This is Italy Melgarejo and Natalia Barrera signing off.